Hey guys, just a quick background before we get started on this video. Uh, for the last probably 5,000 Ks, I've been stressing or mild anxiety about doing the valve check, you know, the 40,000 K service on this bike. I've sort of been tossing up in my mind, you know, whether I shell out a shitload of money to have some inexperienced apprentice not give a shit about doing it properly um, or bite the bullet and do it myself. And I want to give a huge shout out to Nerb1, Brendan, for doing a video on his valve check and adjustment. Um, I knew Nerb was getting close to 40,000 as well and I asked him a while ago if he was going to be doing a video on it and he said, yeah, for sure. Thanks again for doing that, Nerb. It sort of gave me the inspiration to, you know, to do it myself. Even though um, it looked like a major nightmare. Now, if you saw Nerve's video, he actually removed a whole bunch of wiring from above the motor to be able to get the uh, the valve cover off. And uh, in his video, he also mentioned that rather than doing that next time, he was going to try uh, unbolting the engine. You know, just leaving the uh, the back engine mount at the bottom attached and just rolling that engine forward a bit to make it easier to get that. Um, that valve cover off so that's what I ended up doing um, I think it went pretty well as I sit here now all I'm wondering is <laughs> have I put everything back together right but the bike's running fine now so um, hopefully nothing's going to rattle off it I guess it's just one of those things as you get older and your memory starts going a bit shitty you start doubting yourself whether you put everything back right and remember to talk everything up but anyway so I do actually do a few other maintenance jobs on the bike in this video um, but we we'll start with the valve check. Now I didn't film everything and I, it's definitely not a how-to video guys but there are a few tips in the video if you want to drop the engine the way I did uh, rather than having to undo all that wiring like Nerd did so um, hopefully there's some value in there for some of you guys that want to do uh, the valve check yourself. Sorry about my voice I'm just getting over a bit of a man flu guys. I'm a bit croaky but anyway um, let's uh, go back and Start with this valve check. Cheers. Uh, still uh, just over a thousand k's away from uh, forty thousand, but um, since it's since we got some shit house weather here at the moment, um, I'm gonna do my valve check. <laughs> just gonna take my time. There's no hurry. So I think the first thing is I want to get it really clean like the bike's had a wash already but you know I need to clean underneath everything properly so. So I'll get the seat, the fairings and the fuel tank off and just give it, take it out and give it a good pressure wash um, you know all around up underneath. So tank, side plastics, everything's off there. Uh, airbox is taped up, taped up all the connectors and fuel ship. So obviously you can see there's quite a lot of dirt here. When you're taking the top, you know, your valve cover off, you don't want any of this shit falling down in there. So I'm gonna take it out. Probably pressure wash it, I'll see how I go. Get rid of all this crap. This thing will probably do instead of the pressure washer. It's not raining on me, eh? Fucking weather. <coughs> yeah, I've got the fucking bird saw as well. Shouldn't be getting wet. <laughs> Alright, so I've let the bike drip dry a bit. Um, I think the next step is going to be to remove the radiator here. Um, I need to firstly, obviously, drain the coolant, which uh, we undo this bolt here. But first I need to take the radiator cap off, um, so you'll do that. I have no doubt that this shit is going to go everywhere uh, because of the fact that that is pointed directly 
at that rail. <laughs> Good on you, Yamaha. Hopefully I can deflect it a little bit. Beautiful. Do you know what? In reality, I'm only doing this because of NURB. Uh, you know, NURB's video. He made it look doable. Not easy, but doable. But um, when he said, when he just breezed over removing the radiator, saying it was easy, just one bolt, and you know, I struggled with the fucking thing. Kind of makes me worried about uh, the rest of this job. <laughs> but anyway, we'll plot away one bit at a time. But anyway, radio is it. I'm thinking I really should take these crash bars off. It is going to help a lot. All right, status update. Um, I've removed these. Well, loosened this side off. The other one's right off completely. Yeah, I'm already dubious about being able to put this all back together. <laughs> so many wires and shit and clips and fucking God knows what. So, yeah, the engine mounts here are out. There's obviously other ones that are going to need to come out before it rolls forward. Um, but yeah, I've got the bottom of the sump there resting on the jack. So, um, ideally, a paddock stand would be a good thing, but I don't have one, so um, hopefully this will be okay. So yeah, I guess um, I'm just going to have to try and make sure, you know, just see what else needs to be undone before I can drop it down a bit more. Um, obviously, the, you know, the throttle bodies will have to be undone in here. Hopefully, there shouldn't be too much other stuff. I don't think the chain will need to come off or anything like that. You know, I'll do what I can, do what, you know, undo what looks obvious and then, yeah, start taking off these engine mounts. There's another one in here that will have to come out. And then just slowly drop the jack and see if it starts moving. Just make sure everything's not getting damaged <laughs> we'll see we'll see oh yeah and obviously you know the exhaust is fully off too so yeah and that was pretty easy okay so still having some dramas getting this damn engine to drop i did like i've loosened everything off and i gave it a ended up just giving it a kick with the old double pluggers and it moved but uh it wouldn't go any further i only went a little bit and i figured out that uh the drive chain had to come off so it was stopping it from going any further so drive chains off the back sprocket now should be able to come forward a bit yeah so just gonna very slowly lower it on the stand here and uh, see what happens oh yep she's down <laughs> That might just about be enough. Throttle bodies came off nice. Alright, well, I don't know if that's any easier than what NURB did with the wiring. I guess it probably was. Um, we'll see how easily this uh, valve cover comes off. Firstly, get these bloody coil packs out. A lot easier doing this with uh, all this crap out of the way. Alright, the moment of truth. Mate, that thing comes out easy as. Yes. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Oh, yep, that run that gasket. Alright, now the true games begin. 
Got a so I've done measuring the valves. Uh, I'm not going to go into how to do it. If you're going to see that, check out Nerb's video. But uh, just be aware, he says that the, the cam lobes should be pointing inwards. He actually measured his with them pointing outwards, and he says that they should be inwards. I think that's wrong. I think that he did it right. Um, I think the lobes should actually be pointing out. So I watched another video that said uh, they should be pointing out. Anyway, mine are all in spec. Some of them only just. This one here is on the limit. Uh, these two here on the limit they're fine so um, based on that I'm not going to be re-shimming them this time uh, you know why would I when they uh, don't really need to be uh, you know they are on the limit but yeah they'll be good for another 40,000 k's I reckon <laughs> hopefully so yeah I'm going to put it all back together and yeah at least get this motor bolted in a little bit before I uh, knock off for the day I don't want to sort of leave that sitting on the on the stand there but uh, very happy that I don't have to reshim it that's yeah, that's a pain in the ass taking those cans out and all that shit so um, suck it nerd but I don't have to reshim mine <laughs> alright guys yep, we'll get it back together Alright, day two is upon us. Uh, I didn't actually get anything else done yesterday. This bloody thing, this gasket is a pain in the dick. Uh, it falls off the fucking valve cover when you're trying to put the thing back on, so I'm going to try putting some grease or sticking it to the cover with some grease. Um, while I'm here, I'm going to chuck some new spark plugs in and... Uh, yeah, we'll see how we go today. Got to do an airport run in a couple of hours, but uh, yeah, hopefully I can at least get this cover back on before then. Let's see how we go. Perfect. gasket here is held in place with some grease now if this doesn't work I quit <laughs> I can just get it in there without fucking bumping anything <laughs> yes perfect the grease works well, as long as it doesn't leak afterwards place a lot easier than I thought it would be but, um, yeah we'll see we'll see if it's any good <laughs> all right good news all of the engine mounts are now back in um, they're not tightened up yet uh, I'll just go through and make sure everything's kosher um, tighten up me throttle body boots and all that shit but uh, we are well on the way to getting this thing going again. I've really got to stop and just sort out these tools because there is shit everywhere. Yeah, we'll do that first. Alright, so even though this video is not a how-to, I'll try and go over a few of the things that uh, I did in order to drop the motor if you decide to, you know, do it this way um, when you go to check your valves rather than doing it the NURB way, um, unplugging all that bloody wiring. So in case you didn't see NURB's video, there's this big wiring harness up here that you, know, you, can't, you just can't lift the valve cover up high enough to get it off uh, without either unplugging all that wiring or you know, rolling the motor forward like I did. So basically all I've done is, obviously, well I had to unclip a whole bunch of wiring and stuff from these things here, uh, the fake chassis rails unbolt them 
Um, I would have taken this one right off, except it's a bit of a pain getting to that bolt there, so um, I've just left it there. I didn't have to take it right off. Anyway, the other one's all the way off. So yeah, once you get all those off, obviously the exhaust. I took off my clutch cable and just got that out of the way. I uh, don't know if it was necessary or not, but I did that. Obviously undo the rubber boots on the airbox that go to, you know, from the throttle bodies to the airbox. On this side, I removed the coolant overflow, the horn and everything obviously came off with the radiator. I did unbolt this thing here, just got that out of the way. I didn't know if you know, all this was going to clear it when it rolled forward. Um, I had to take the sprocket cover off just so that I could get to the engine mount in here. And of course, yeah, as I mentioned, you got to take the chain off so that this can come forward, uh, which is no dramas. I think that's pretty much it. So yeah, you've got this mounting plate here. You've got that bolt that goes through down there. You've got one of these on the other side, of course, and you've got these main mounting bolts here. Um, these are my you know crash bar brackets you probably won't have those unless you've got src crash bars i'm pretty sure that's about all i did and just yeah obviously make sure you put a jack under the motor before you undo all your your engine mounts so that it just doesn't drop on the concrete yeah oh and yeah you'll probably want to make sure your coil packs are unplugged at least probably removed would be good oh one thing to be aware of guys these wires they got really tight i'm hoping that i haven't done any damage to them but um, yeah, when you drop the motor, don't don't go too far with it because these will tighten up unless you unplug it. You can unplug that one there. The other one, I'm not too sure about where it goes. But um, yeah, as long as you don't go too far with it, it should be okay. So I'm just going to continue putting this back together and keep my fingers crossed that uh, it's going to run straight off the bat. Still got a bunch of other maintenance to do on it yet, so um, yeah, we'll be getting into that once I've got most of this back together. Right, this is it. Should be no reason why it doesn't start now. Fuel's all hooked up. Oh, but I've got coolant in there. Oh, nerve wracking. Okay, we have fuel pressure. Come on, Yamaha. Ha, ha, ha. Transsetters, still a bit of an oil change, oil and filter. Also got some fresh fork oil. That is hot, hot oil. <laughs> it's been for a rip on the bike to get the fork oil. I also picked up a uh, magnetic drain bolt to throw in this time. Of course, doesn't come with any fucking crush washer. This one's a, a Zeta magnetic. Probably a bit late at 40,000 k's adding one of these, but better late than never. Hopefully one of these old copper crush washers that I just happen to have laying around will fit. Not quite. Dang it. spot on if you're changing the filter as well yeah, which I do every time anyway two point five liters exactly just gave it a bit of a run and perfect by the time it fully settles it'll be just over halfway up that glass sweet on to phase three Ah, day three. Hello, people. Sun has returned. Blue skies for days. Well, hours at the moment. Um, 
tell you that today, day three, is new fork oil and headset bearings need to be serviced. Hopefully they'll be okay, I just need a bit of grease on them. So I did find a washer for that, it's just an aluminium washer. I don't know if it's a crash washer or not, but it's not leaking, so cool. So now that I've done the oil change, I can whack the bash plate back on, which will uh, allow me to jack the bike up so I can get the forks off and the triple clamp so I can do those bearings. Looking after 30, 28 deals and Ks. None in there. Yeah, it's looking alright. Pretty lovely. Alrighty, forks are draining there. I've got the handlebars and shit tied up here with a grunt strap and yeah, everything's off there I tell you what, getting these risers off getting to the 17mm dome nuts under there is a pain in the dick so um, I find that to get this big nut off, I think it's a 27 I can't get a you know socket underneath there to get this off and it is a tight son of a bitch, but um, a shifter, a large shifter with that stuck on the end of it for a bit of extra leverage did the job um, and yeah, you don't have to worry about taking the risers off, which as I said, sucks so yeah, now I just need to undo these I can drop that triple out plenty of grease on there and they're, they're pretty clean so that's good yeah so these bearings still pretty clean and good nick so I'm just gonna put some fresh grease on them whack them back in See how this goes. It's not the recommended way to service your forks, but it's how we do it in the cheap skates. guys that is the end of day three this bike is hello cable what are you doing bike is all back together and she's all good i was gonna 
do the swing arm and linkage bearings this <laughs> this time around but i uh, kind of a bit over the maintenance now so I might leave that for next time I was also going to change out the wheel bearings uh, they've got the rears have about 24,000 k's on them I think but they still seem fine there's no play in not even in the cush hub bearing the fronts have about 18,000 on them I think so I'm just going to leave it like I wouldn't head out to the Simpson Desert or something with these wheel bearings and I'd change them but for now they, they're going to be fine bells still in spec after 40,000 k's Still the original fork seals, 40,000 kilometers. I mean, like all the plastics on here have been zip tied up, they were broken from having soft luggage on there. But man, like, it's yeah, who cares? It's easy to fix, it's, a, it's an off road bike, you know. A few zip ties here and there don't matter, but yeah, this old girl's ready for the next adventure. I think everything's gone relatively smoothly um, quite happy with it I didn't break anything I didn't have any bolts or anything left over when I'm finished so all good I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you weren't too disappointed that it wasn't the proper how-to and shit <laughs> um, don't forget to grab your new T7 shirts from my store if you like that one they're pretty cool Thank you for watching guys, thanks Patreons, I'll see you on the next video, cheers.